everybody. I'm Sin. Welcome to the Book Nook. I went crazy at the library again. I can't stop it. It's hard for me to go and like not get a bunch of books. I went there just to go pick up a book and I got I got a bunch. I got like five more on top of the one that I picked up. I don't I was like, oh, I'll just go and I'll just look and see. Well, I found more books. So <laughs> here we are with another library book haul. All right. So the first book I got is this neat little book. It's really small. This should be a quick read. It is called A Dream Life by Claire Massoud. Here, let's give you a look. I got some, some hot lips smoking a cigarette. So A Dream Life by Claire Massoud. It talks about a family called the Armstrong family, and they moved to New York at the dawn of the 1970s. I have always loved hearing about the 60s and 70s culture, so I'm, I'm into it. That, that grabbed me. The cover grabbed me, too. It's, like, really simple. I'm not, a, I'm not usually a fan of pink. It looks really pale. I don't know if you can even... Yeah, you can kind of see that it's pink. And, and I like just the simple illustration of it. So, so here, sorry, I think I got sidetracked. Uh, so 1970s, yes, the dawn of the 1970s, Australia feels to Alice Armstrong like the end of the earth. Oh, they moved from New York. Wait, what the hell? Sorry, I'm reading the synopsis and it, it's, let me just stop grabbing pieces of it and I'll read the paragraph. <laughs> When the Armstrong family moves from New York at the dawn of the 1970s, Australia feels to Alice Armstrong like the end of the earth. That makes more sense when I say it as a complete sentence. Residing in a grand manor on the glittering Sydney Harbor, her family finds their life has turned upside down. As she navigates this strange new world, Alice must weave an existence from its shimmering mirage. Lies and deception are at the heart of this keenly observed story. This is a sharp, biting, and playful tale with a cast of unscrupulous characters. A drift in a dream life of their own making. Apparently they're just uh, living the dream. I don't know. <laughs> Written with the characteristic delicacy of touch, humor, and emotional insight that makes Claire Massoud one of our greatest writers. All right, so I hope I'm saying her name right. So the next one. There's two in this pile that I've already talked about in a previous in a previous uh, video, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on them. One of them is this one, Life with the Afterlife by Amy Bruni. She is the co-producer and co-star of Kindred Spirits along with Adam Barry, and this is a book about 13 truths I learned about ghosts. And it talks about her experiences growing up with the paranormal, all about her show, her experience with uh, ghost hunters. And I'd been meaning to pick up this book and read it for a while. So Amy Bruni, Life with the Afterlife. This is one of my paranormal, my paranormal, uh, I don't want to call it an obsession. I'm not obsessed with the paranormal. I'm interested. I like to read a lot about paranormal things. My... Severe interest? No. I don't know. It's not an obsession, I swear. I swear. <laughs> and then the, the next one I got was also mentioned in another video, and that was Season of the Witch, How Cult Save Rock and Roll, and this is by Peter Biebergel. He wrote another book called Strange Frequencies that is another, has to do with paranormal stuff, and it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, sorry, trying not to get the glare of the books. And this was another one I mentioned in a previous video. And basically it talks about how rock and roll, hip hop, and all these different bands have been influenced by esoteric practices and occults and basically how it saved rock and roll. I'm not sure how that happened, but we're going to find out in this book by Peter Biebergel, Season of the Witch. And I like the cover too. It's got David Bowie. It looks like Ozzy Osbourne and uh, probably that's probably Jimmy Page because he was all up in it with the Aleister Crowley and uh, he was into some super occult stuff. All right, so next book we got is called The Great Witch of Brittany. And this is by Louisa Morgan. Oh, it's doing weird stuff. We're going to set this down and I'll get a picture of this one. Yeah, when they look a little too weird, I'll just put a picture up there. So, okay. 
The Great Witch of Brittany by Louisa Morgan. So there hasn't been a witch born in the Orchier clan for generations. According to the elders, the line's dead, leaving the clan vulnerable to the whims of superstitious villagers, which are obviously the worst. You know how that goes. Burn her. She's a witch. People are a-holes. Anyway, I digress. Okay, so superstitious villagers and the prejudices of fear-mongering bishops. Yay, religion. All right, I need to stop making snarky snarks about stuff, how I feel towards organized religion. Anywho. Ursula Orchier has been raised on the stories of the great witches of the past, but the only magic she knows is the false spells her mother weaves over the gullible women who visit their fortune-telling caravan. Everything changes when Ursula comes of age and a spark of power flares to life. Aww! Thrilled to be chosen. She has no idea how magic will twist and shape her future. I bet it's going to be interesting because, I mean, I'm intrigued. Guided by an ancient grimoire and the whispers of her ancestors, Ursula is destined to walk the same path as the great witches of old. But first... But first, there's always a but, right? Big but, big but incoming. But first, the Orchier magical lineage must survive. Oh man. And danger hovers over her, whether it's the bloodlust of the mob or the flames of the pier. Of course, because, you know, the villagers, they're just jealous. Jerks. It is a tale of magic and fate, triumph and heartbreak, and the powerful bonds between mothers and daughters. This all unfolds in the late 1700s in this spellbinding novel from master storyteller Louisa Morgan. And man, oh man, does that sound good. And I swear, this is so weird. When I go to the library, sometimes I end up with like themes of books. Like that one time, it was all like stars and celestial. This selection of books I got is so witchy and magical. And we got two more. We got two more. We got another, um, like a... Murder and magic, and then a, a horror. But I don't know how this happens. It wasn't on purpose. This was like some weird thing in my brain is like, okay, this time, witches and paranormal and ghosts. I don't know. Last time it was like things about stars that are fantastical. I don't, you know, I don't know. Anyhow, the next book we got is The Undertakers. And that is by Nicole Glover. There's like a celestial goose or swan behind her i saw this one it sounded pretty interesting this is here let's read you the synopsis about the undertakers okay i'm always trying not let's do you want to see it see the cover more there you go okay so nothing bothers hetty and benji Rhodes more than a case where the answers motives and the murder itself feel a bit too neat murder is never neat Raymond Duvall, a victim of one of the many fires that have erupted recently in Philadelphia, is officially declared dead after the accident. But Hetty and Benji's investigation points to a powerful fire company known to let homes in the black community burn to the ground. Before long, another death breathes new life into the Duvall investigation. Raymond's son, Valentine, is also found dead. Finding themselves with the dubious honor of taking on Valentine Duval at their first major funeral, it becomes clear that his passing was intentional. Valentine and his father's deaths are connected, and the recent fires plaguing the city might be more linked to recent community events than Hetty and Benji originally thought. The Undertakers continues the adventures of murder and magic, where even the most powerful enchantments can't always protect you from the ghosts of the past. I thought that sounded really good. So I look forward to reading this. Looking forward to that. I look forward to all these. Every book I get from the library, obviously I was interested, so I must be looking forward to it. <laughs> and then this one, Sundial by Catriona Ward. This is the author of The Last House on Needless Street, which I haven't read, and I need to read that. I do. I've heard really good stuff, and everyone says, no matter how much you think you will, you will never see and figure out the twist at the end. So I was intrigued by that. And then uh, I think this is her newest one. 
So I saw it at the library, I scooped it up, and I was like, heck yeah, we're going to read this. So let's give you a little bit of synopsis on this one. So Sundial is a twisty psychological horror novel. And here we go. All Rob ever wanted was a normal life. Um, don't we all, Rob? Don't we all? Nothing like her childhood. Growing up in the lonely, wild Mojave Desert on her family's ranch. Sundial. I guess the ranch was called Sundial. Okay. Got it. Got it. Surrounded by dogs, coyotes, and research assistants. Wonder what they're researching. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. For a while, it seemed like Rob got her wish. A husband, two daughters, the picket fence, and margaritas with the neighbors. Oh, boy. But when a frightening accident in her home reveals a disturbing secret in her oldest daughter's bedroom. Huh? Rob knows her luck has run out. What's buried out on Sundial could never stay a secret forever, and Rob must risk one last trip out there to protect her family's future. What's out there? Is it like Skinwalker Ranch? I wonder. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited for this one. I think out of all of these, this one I am excited for the most. The most. You know what I was thinking about doing, which is, I don't know if this is dumb or not, I was going to take, uh, I was going to like choose three books from my library pile. And we, ha we have a cat, Mittens. And I was going to sprinkle catnip on each one. And whatever book he went to first, I would read that one first. And maybe I would film it and make it and um, put it in the, the my short series of a cat and a book. Let me know if you guys think that would be fun. Yes or no. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, that was my library book haul. Got a lot of good stuff. It was a very witchy and magical one this time around with a, you know, a bit of the paranormal, some some fiction and some nonfiction paranormal. So should be a good good time with this, this stack of books that we will power through. But thank you so much again for joining me. Here we talk about books. I talk about weird stuff. I insert my opinions about the synopsis that I read whether wanted or not, if you had fun hanging out, smash that follow button. That sounded dumb. Just so, you know, like, subscribe, turn on those notifications, come back, see me again, and then we'll talk about more of this, the awesomeness that is books. Because I love it, you love it, that's why we're here. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>